Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, it's very exciting to uh, to reintroduce the uh, Congressional Hispanic Conference, and this is this is something that has been around for 20 years. It's the first time that we've actually had uh, you know a, a large amount of Hispanic members, conservative members. You know, it's a historic moment. We've got 18 members uh, from a very diverse background. It's very exciting. A lot of new members. Uh, what you see is everyone, you know, a lot of these folks, these are the people that won the majority for the Republican Party. They won seats that, that uh, are tough, that will be tough, and have been tough. Uh, places like uh, Monica De La Cruz in Texas, uh, in an open seat. Places like Juan Siscomani in Arizona, uh, Lori Chavez in, in Oregon, Anna Paula Luna in Florida. Uh, I mean, these are all tough seats. Uh, two cycles ago, I won a seat. That, uh, that no one thought I could win. Uh, I, I'm in Texas 23, uh, over 800 miles of the southern border, predominantly Hispanic, a lot going on in the district. Uvalde is in the district, El Paso, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, places like that. Two cycles ago, no one thought I could win. And, uh, and then last cycle, I won by 17 points. So when you represent your district, uh, good things happen. And, and this is what I'm excited about this conference. It, the Hispanic Conference is, uh, is just, uh, it, it's an energy, it's this new breath, uh, you know, and, and in the 118th Congress, five members equals 100. So to have 18 members is, is, is something very special. As uh, Carlos Jimenez likes to say, we are the future of the party. And you know what, we're a diverse group. We've got diverse philosophies, we've got diverse backgrounds. Uh, you know, I, I've got a military background, you've got small business leaders, You've got uh, uh, Anthony Despacito is a, a, a former police officer. He's just got a diverse background. And I think that's very special in itself. I think this group is gonna talk about, uh, border is gonna be very, very prominent in the role of talking about border security and immigration. And that's all great. We all have a lot of background in that, certainly in my district. I have, I have that, is, that is an important issue. But you're gonna see us talk about a whole lot more than that. You're gonna see this, this organization, the Hispanic Conference, talk about business, small businesses, and helping the American people. You're gonna see us talk about uh, police, uh, uh, law enforcement, supporting our law enforcement, and then honestly, trade and commerce. So there's, there's, there's a, an ample amount of opportunities that the Hispanic Conference uh, is gonna to bring to the table. But these are the people that want us the majority. These will be the people that keep us in the majority. And without this group, uh, you know, it's important that the, the conference remains united going forward. Uh, I'm honored to be one of the co-chairs. I'd like to turn it over now to uh, my other co-chair, uh, Mario diaz Villart, who's been a leader here in the house for, uh, for a long time. Thank you, Tony. Thanks so much. Well done. Good morning, folks. Buenos días. Gusto verlos a todos ustedes. It's important to know that this is a group to be reckoned. As Tony said, you know, right now five members uh, are the most important people in, in the entire house. Well, we are a diverse group who represent Hispanics, who have Hispanic origins. And let's be very clear, the Hispanics in this country are concerned with the same issues and are affected by the same issues that every other person in our country is concerned about. You know, in, in an era where um, buying a dozen eggs has become a luxury item, in an era where gas prices are, are, are strangling uh, families, where we have a crisis on the border, where we have record high inflation, it's great to see that the Hispanics in our, in our country who have woken up to the damage that the left wing, that the socialists, that the democratic policies have inflicted on this great country. So uh, we thank you all for being here. Uh, just know that this is a diverse group and we are in a number of different committees, important committees, so we are going to have a say on every important issue that the House deals with in this Congress. It's, it's a privilege to work with this amazing group of individuals who are bright, who are talented, who are tough, 
as Tony said, many come from difficult districts, but they uh, and therefore they understand what this country needs, what this country wants, and uh, what uh, what we are here to do, what we have been sent to do here in Congress. Gracias por estar aquí. Esta conferencia hispana republicana, eh, que ahora tiene los números más grandes que hemos tenido en la, en la historia de esta conferencia, somos un factor importantísimo en el Congreso de los Estados Unidos. Los hispanos en, en nuestro país tienen los mismos problemas que el resto de la población. Ahora estamos viviendo una época que una docena de huevos, por ejemplo, es incosteable para la familia, donde la gasolina no se puede comprar por el precio, donde la inflación está estrangulando a nuestras familias y donde el gobier los gobiernos quieren dictar eh, qué es lo que le enseñan a nuestros hijos y nuestras hijas en la escuela y no quieren que los padres tengamos opiniones sobre esos temas. No, nosotros estamos aquí para representar a ese pueblo, a esa, esa diversidad de comunidad hispana a través de esta nación. Somos un factor enorme, estamos en distintos, en distintos comités eh, de suma importancia, así que vamos a continuar siendo aún un factor más y más importante. Gracias por estar aquí. Uh, now let me uh, uh, yield to again a dear friend, fellow appropriator, fellow appropriator who uh, uh, represents an area uh, where it's always a battle, but he always comes through. He's a fighter, he's an effective, one of the most effective members of Congress, that's Dave Valdeo. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Valdeo. I represent California's 22nd Congressional District. Um, I'm the son of immigrants. My parents uh, immigrated here from the Azores, Portugal, and uh, I represent probably one of the most Hispanic districts in the country. Uh, my 21st Congressional District is about 75% Hispanic, and this one is really close to 70% Hispanic, 30% um, foreign born. And so obviously immigration is something I spend a lot of time talking about, but uh, just like was mentioned already here a few different times, a lot of these immigrants who have come to this country, a lot of times I spend talking with them and listening to their issues, uh, they've got the same concerns as everyone else in the district. I mean, the ones that own trucks, uh, we still dairy, still own a farm, and so I've got a lot of truckers coming on the farm who own one truck and one trailer and they're hauling commodities, and these fuel prices are bearing them. They don't have the ability to be, uh, to feed their families, they don't have the ability to continue to do their business. And these are people who have worked hard to get in this position to be successful, and Washington is just making it more and more difficult for them to survive. And we've got to continue to focus on issues that affect each and every single one of us. But we come from kind of a unique little background here because it is a segment of the population that's growing, is having a, a larger and larger impact in politics, but also having a larger and larger impact in our community. And the more time we spend addressing these issues, it will continue to bring this conference together to understand the, the, the issues that are affecting all of America. So I'm thrilled to be a part of this and want to help continue to grow this organization. And we've got a lot of great members here, but my responsibility now is introducing my good friend from Florida, uh, Maria Elvira Salazar. Thank you. Uh, thanks to all of you. Um, how many um, in English and how many uh, news outlets in Spanish? So just raise your hand. How many in Spanish? Two and the rest three, so the rest is English, right? So we're gonna do some English and some Spanish just like Mary did. And thank you very much, Tony Gonzalez and Mayor diaz Ballard. Those are two champions. And I'm delighted to be part of this amazing group that is growing, as they said, because as I'm sure you know, with the Hispanics, the Latinos, the Browns, any way you wanna call them, we are 23% of the population. We are the largest minority in the country. And thank God that we are, very well and highly represented in the House of Representatives, and, and it's growing and growing. Um, um, Ronald Reagan uh, said at one point that Hispanics are Republicans, they just do not know it. And uh, now it's being proven more and more. We are God-fearing, mm -hmm. law-abiding, want to pay taxes, uh, family-oriented, small government. And unfortunately, we have seen in the last years that this country, the system in this country has gone from what it was to, like Mario said, to this left-wing policy that Hispanics reject. And that is why, maybe that's why, we are now IT, because we are not socialists, because we do not like the woke uh, policies, because we are all very much more conservative uh, than many people thought, and that's why they voted with their values. So uh, I think that Tony Gonzalez is becoming a fantastic leader. He represents the Mexican Americans, like he said. He is uh, in, a, in, a, in a district that is 
highly uh, Mexican, Hispanic. You are 70%, I am 75% uh, Hispanic, but I represent the, the Cuban Americans, the Mexican, uh, the, the Nicaraguan Americans, the Venezuelans, those immigrants that come from other parts of the world, but that love and, and admire the American exceptionality. Uh, I just want to send a message to the news media, because remember that I was one of you for 35 years. We are very united. We're the Hispanic group, but we are not fighting against the other groups. How Freedom Caucus, we are all one party, and we are coming together, sitting at the table, discussing the issues, and reaching an agreement in, uh, in, 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 in good spirits. So I don't want, we do not want to send the message that we are divided. We are very united. And the Hispanics are going to vote, and we're going to come to terms with what's good for the United States and future policies. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, we really would like to, for, to send a message that, uh, that we are here to vote our values and that the Hispanic issues are very much important to us and that we're going to make sure that they will be voted on. So thank you very much. And I think now we're going to be talking to my wonderful dear friend, Nicole Maliotakis from New York. Thank you, Maria. Uh, good morning, everyone. Nicole Meliotakis, New York's 11th district. I uh, represent New York City, Staten Island, and, and Southern Brooklyn. And like my uh, friends Mario and Maria, uh, my mother uh, fled a communist dictatorship of the Castro regime. And uh, that is why, uh, partly why I'm here today, is because I'm very motivated to stop against, to work against, and fight uh, the socialist uh, wing of our, of our Congress that is looking to implement the very things that uh, many of those we represent have fled, and they don't want to see take place in our great country. Uh, I have a very diverse district. Um, my district's probably about 15% Hispanic, but I have a lot of other immigrant groups from all over. Uh, I would say probably some of the biggest are the Egyptian community, the uh, Turkish community, the Albanian community, Russian community, Polish community. So it's a very, very diverse district. It truly is a microcosm of the city of New York. And as was mentioned, uh, the immigrant groups that I represent care about the same issues that everyone else does. It's inflation, it's the economy, it's the ability to stay in their own homes. It's the border crisis that is now affecting New York City. Um, it, is, it is crime, uh, specifically uh, due to the policies implemented at our state level. Um, and you know we are here to give an alternative viewpoint. I'm the only Republican who represents New York City uh, in Congress, and I'm certainly uh, looking to bring a different perspective and have done, done su uh, such. Uh, I think for us, the, the goal is to really um, show Hispanics around the country that there is an alternative to what the Democrats are offering. Uh, and as you saw from this year's election results, uh, in my district in particular, I mean, I won by six, and then against the same person, uh, I won by 24 uh, this last go around. I think it was because you're seeing these uh, both minority groups and immigrant groups recognizing that the policies uh, that Republicans are offering actually provide public safety, they provide border security, they provide um, you know, economic prosperity. Uh, and in particular with, with the border situation, and all my colleagues can comment on this, but in New York City we're now facing a situation where uh, the taxpayers are, are expected to pay billions of dollars to house individuals who have entered our country illegally many claiming asylum who don't qualify for it. And it's become a problem. And I'll tell you, the most vocal people that I hear from are the immigrant, the immigrants, because they came here, they followed the rules, they did everything right. Um, and now they're very offended by what they're seeing under uh, President Biden's border crisis. And with that said, I'll also say, uh, I have probably helped more people become United States uh, citizens from New York City than any of my colleagues. And I would ask you to ask the other offices. We helped 80 people from 25 different countries become United States citizens in just my first term. And I would love to know how many of the open border Democrats from New York City have helped. So we're here to uh, you know, provide a contrast, provide an alternative, and I'm really happy to see that this group is growing. I think Juan, Juan you're next. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. Thank you for being here. Gracias por acompañarnos. It's a great pleasure to be here with uh, such esteemed colleagues. I am new, I'm less than a month old in this place, 
and I'm already having a lot of fun. It's been an exciting start. So uh, I think uh, they're chuckling because they're chuckling. And, uh, I, I do want to thank uh, my friend. Uh, if you haven't said anything yet, I, I, I want to thank my friend uh, Tony Gonzalez, who was one of my uh, uh, early mentors in this process, and and also uh, Marty Diaz Villar, who I've known for a while back when I was an intern here uh, in the early 2000s. I I would see Mario walking by, and now I, I now I can I can. Uh, you know, view these press conferences with them. <laughs> these are the kind of opportunities this country offers. Uh, I'm from southeastern Arizona uh, in the city of Tucson. That's the main city in my district. We are a border district, and it touches several parts of, um, of the southeastern corner of that, five different counties in Arizona. And I now a little background on, on myself and the district. I'll tell you about the district first. This is a district that, in terms of the Hispanic population, we're looking at maybe a little bit over 20% of the district being Hispanic. So it's not a Hispanic majority district. I, I became the first Hispanic Republican elected in the state of Arizona. I'm also the first immigrant from Mexico elected to Congress in the state of Arizona. My family was, we were all born in Mexico in, in the city of Hermosillo and Sonora, that's in the northern part of Mexico. And we immigrated to, to Arizona, to Tucson when I, was, when I was a young kid. And that's why I believe in the American dream so much. Where, where else in the world can we have our story? You know, my dad, right before I launched the campaign, asked me, uh, in a conversation in Spanish, of course, he said, where else can we have our story? So we come to the country, we immerse in the culture, we learn English, we become US citizens. My dad said, I drive a bus my whole life, and my son has a shot of becoming a member of the United States Congress. Where else in the world can we have that story? Only here. This is the land of opportunity. The land of the American dream is alive. El sueño americano está vivo para quien sea que quiera una oportunidad a ellos, for whoever that wants an opportunity at it. It's right here. But we have to keep it that way. And this shows diversity in our group. This shows that our backgrounds are, are different. You, you've heard some speak Spanish, some speak a different kind of Spanish, but we're, we're all <laughs> here for the same reason. Because my district, not being majority Hispanic, really allows me to really focus on the issues completely that impact everyone. People ask me often, what are the Hispanic issues? There are no Hispanic issues. There are issues that impact everyone. You know, my district has two military installations. It's got a vast majority of small business, farming, development, mining. My district has a lot of these aspects that I focus on the issues to advance and show results for my district. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to work together to make our country better and make sure that the American dream is there for anybody that wants a shot at it. I'm a product of it. But the reality is that everybody up here is a product of the American dream. But also, I think all of you are a product of the American dream. We all have our different story, whether you just, you immigrated here in your generation like I did, maybe the previous generation like my wife, or maybe uh, further back like other families. Regardless, we are here because this country has given us the opportunity to go from point A to point B. And that's by keeping the federal government and all forms of government in their right place so that we can be free to pursue our dreams. That's why we're here. Por eso estamos aquí, para defender el sueño americano. That's why we're here, to defend the American dream. Thank you everyone so much. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my friend from Texas, Monica de la Cruz. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Monica de la Cruz, and I am proud to stand here in front of you as a South Texan and a new member of the Congressional Hispanic Conference. You know, when my abuelitos came from Mexico, they had never imagined that their granddaughter, the granddaughter of a Mexican farm worker, would one day be standing here as a member of the People's House. The People's House, can you imagine? My grandparents were humble, they were hardworking, and they taught our family to love this beautiful country and love God and love one another. You know, because of these values, Today, I have the distinct honor to represent and serve my community. I believe that these values are the reason why the Republican Party just had its best year ever with Hispanics in a midterm election. We have so much work still to do, but our best year with Hispanics in this great country. My colleagues and I are working hard to address issues that matter to Hispanics 
and really to all Americans, issues such as lower prices for food and gas, a safe and secure border, clean water and parks for our kids, affordable and quality health care. I'd like to thank the Chairman Diaz Ballard and Chairman Gonzalez for their leadership, and I look forward to working with my colleagues here to serve. Thank you. And let's see, I would like to, um, let's see, I think it's Ana Paulina, right? Carlos, oh no, Carlos is right here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Come on over, Carlos. <laughs> Thank you so much, and, and certainly a pleasure for me to be here. And um, and I want to thank uh, uh, Tony and, and my my very old old old, old <laughs> Mario Diaz Velarde you know, for for uh, for being here. And uh, yeah, we, I've known Mario for for quite a bit, quite a long time. He's from Miami, and and uh, also my colleague from Miami, you know, Maria Aguirre Salazar. Look, um, when you look back here, that's the future of the Republican Party. It's the beginning of the future of the Republican Party. Um, and, and the reason why is because uh, Hispanics, um, and I'm generalizing, but Hispanics in general hold the same values that we do. We value hard work, we value faith, we value God, we value family, we value opportunity, we value freedom. Uh, and, uh, and that's why uh, the proof is in the pudding as to why Hispanics are, are gravitating towards the the Republican Party because we hold their same values and they're waking up to that fact. You know, as um, Nicole said, she won by, I think, four or five points initially. She won by 24 points uh, the last last election. In my election, uh, my first election, I won by around four points. And this last election, I won by 27, close to 28 points. Why? The, the, the district didn't change. Uh, but. Uh, more and more Hispanics are opening up to the fact that, yeah, it's the Republican Party that actually holds their value. Uh, and it's the same people uh, voting uh, again in two years' time. That's, uh, that's a huge swing to, uh, to the Republican Party. And, that's, and I believe that's going to continue across the nation. And this caucus, this group, is going to grow and grow and grow. Uh, because, again, this is the future of the Republican Party and the future of America, too, because we're the largest minority population and we'll continue to grow uh, and become a bigger part of the American population and of America itself. That's a good thing. Um, look, I'm an immigrant. I came here when I was six years old. Actually, you know, six years old, almost seven. I didn't speak a word of English, not one. And uh, my parents came here fleeing communism uh, and looking for opportunity, looking for freedom, looking for a place where they could you know, raise their children in a, in a free way uh, without, being, without the oppression of a, of a socialist communist regime that we had uh, in Cuba. And, and I remember you know, uh, when I first got here, I still remember this you know, vividly in Miami at the time, Miami uh, probably had about maybe less than a million people. And you know, now has two point, Miami-Dade has about 2.8 million people in our biggest, the biggest uh, building there was the, the courthouse, 25 stories. Right now, you know, we're building a thousand, thousand, you know, a thousand foot uh, skyscrapers. But I was wondering, you know, what, what the future held for me. And again, in what other country could a kid who doesn't even speak the language when he, when he gets here at six years old, ends up not only being a fire chief, being a commissioner of a, of a county, being a mayor of that, of that county and representing 2.8 million people, and then finally, joining the halls of, of Congress, one of maybe 12,000 people in the history of the United States that ever uh, have been in Congress. There's not many other places where you can say that that happens. That's why we love America. That's why we will fight for America. And we will always fight for America. And uh, the, the principles that make America great, which is opportunity and freedom um, for, for our children and uh, for us and our children. And so again, you know, take a good look because it's just the beginning. Next Congress, we're going to be bigger. We're going to have more of us, uh, and we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And so, a little bit of, in, in Spanish, uh, yo estoy muy orgulloso de estar aquí con, con mi colega este Tony, también este mi, mi amigo de muchos, muchos años, este Mario Díaz Valar, uh, y también con, con mi colega de, de Miami, este María Salazar, con otros también miembros de, de este grupo de hispanos republicanos, que para mí este es el futuro del Partido Republicano. Los hispanos. 
y, uh, y se ha demostrado con las últimas elecciones que más de nosotros fuimos elegidos y también que nosotros que allá estuvimos aquí, eh, como Nicole y yo, eh, y María y, y Mario, el, el margen de, de victoria ha crecido más y más y más. Y eso lo, y lo, y lo vamos a demostrar en la próxima elección, que vamos a tener más de nosotros aquí. Este va a ser, al final yo creo que va a ser el grupo más grande en el Congreso, porque vamos a tener tantos hispanos. Va a tomar un poquitico de tiempo, pero sí vamos a llegar ahí. ¿Y por qué? ¿Por qué? Porque los hispanos, hispanos entienden que los principios del Partido Republicano son sus principios, que es la fe, la familia, trabajo, oportunidad. Y eso es lo que le da a nosotros eh, esta gran nación. Y por eso que nosotros estamos tan orgullosos de estar aquí, pero también tenemos el, el amor que tenemos para, para este país que se llama los Estados Unidos. Así que para mí otra vez, un, un gran placer estar con todos ustedes. Y ahora, ¿quién lo voy a turnar a? Hola, Paulina. Gracias. Hola, Paulina Luna. Soy Florida's 13th Congressional District. I also happen to be one of the first um, uh, Mexican Americans to be elected in the state of Florida, and also one of the first minorities to be elected to my district. So it's been an honor and privilege. But I think everyone standing behind me agrees that you know our voice is increasingly becoming more and more important, especially being that uh, piggybacking off of what Representative Salazar said, that according to PewHispanic.org, Hispanic Americans are now the largest voting minority in the country. And I know that we win on the arguments. If we didn't, they wouldn't be working so hard at trying to suppress us every step of the way. There's been many left-wing outlets that have actually gone in, especially to the Miami-Dade area, in an effort to buy up conservative media so that we can't share our message. And when you hear the stories behind us, especially those who have family members that have fled communism and socialism, really what the left will try to do is undercut it, that and, and really undercut the fact that these people generally have fears for good reason, because they experienced it. And unfortunately, a lot of times the left will try to discredit us and say that we're conspiracy theorists when clearly, as you can see behind us, we are not. And so I'm very honored to be a part of this group. I'm very honored to say that there's a lot of us who are going to be championing this message and I think look forward to taking back the house in some shape or form. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lori Chavez Deremer, uh, representing the great state of Oregon. So from Florida to Oregon, We are across the country representing Hispanic Americans. Um, my grandmother's family came here. I know she had a sixth grade education. She did work in the fields. I do not speak Spanish. I can't understand it, so do not talk about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm talking about you. All of you. Um, but I will tell you this. Um, you know, that was something my grandparents were very proud of, that, that they wanted us to speak English. Um, You know, I'm 54 years old, and I think about it now, and who would have known that I would be standing up here to represent, you know, my grandparents, uh, who worked so very hard for faith, family, freedom, hard work. Um, you know, I served uh, as a mayor in Happy Valley, Oregon, and when you represent all of your district, you represent all heritages. We have a, a high Asian population, a big Slavic population. Uh, Hispanic population is quite small in Oregon, but that's changing. It is the fastest growing, and we have to make sure that we recognize that. Um, and as a mayor, it doesn't matter really which party. You just want to recognize the values. And as a mom of twin girls who are finding their way in the world, uh, we want to make sure that we have this pathway uh, of what all of us bring. Um, and as a business owner for 18 years, I think that's important to have uh, Hispanic businesses open every single day and we can change that American dream and it might take generation after generation after generation but we cannot quit we have to stand up and we have to fight and I cannot thank uh, all of you for opening the tent as, as freshmen as we've come in uh, the first thing that uh, happened is the Hispanic caucus reached out and they said welcome be a part of us let's speak in one voice as we move across and Again, uh, Congressman Valadeo, uh, we grew up in the same hometown of Central Valley of California, and now we're standing here as uh, counterparts. And, and as my grandmother would say, uh, I feel very blessed to have my comadres and compadres here, because it is a community that brings us together. And uh, so thank you, thank you very much. We will be a voice, we will be a united voice. We will always stand together. And when Tony and uh, Mario had us come here this morning, they said, be here. Be here, it's important to speak as one voice and to show in numbers that we can change this country for the better. So um, this is the greatest country on earth and we will fight for it every single day. So thank you. I'll turn it back over uh, to Tony to wrap it up. Okay, 
Yeah, I'm gonna take a couple questions. I'm oh, sorry, Mariana. Um, you all mentioned, you know, you all have become from different places, have very different experiences, but you can all understand each other within your own backbone um, from being there, regardless of the issue. Two part question. You two talked about the issues that matter to you. I know this is all like just house is really just starting its business. What specifically are the issues that you all want to take the United Front on? And then secondly, I think one of those issues that you've already seen is obviously border security. Sure. Um, and the Judiciary Committee is starting to talk about that to debate that today. Are you all united against any kind of legislation that, for example, as you've seen, blocks asylum? Um, any of those specific um, border security issues? Yeah, every, every Republican uh, ran on border security, on securing the border from New York to Florida to Oregon to Texas. Uh, it, it's clear that the border crisis impacts every single state in America. Whether it's fentanyl, whether it's terrorism, whether it's the sheer number of gotaways, every single Republican ran on that. So uh, I, we are absolutely united in, in finding solutions. And I think the key is solutions. What you see behind, behind us today is uh, these are governing conservatives. This is how do we come together and how do we work things out for the betterment of the, of the people. Now it isn't gonna be, you know, it, sometimes it's messy, sometimes it's, it takes a while, sometimes there's, there's a lot of dialogue that takes place, but I'm very confident that the, uh, that the, the overall Republican conference will be united in, uh, in providing a border security solution. Now when you start talking immigration, border security, border security and immigration are two separate topics. And, and while all of us ran on border security, immigration is it's a separate animal. And, and, and that, that's one I think that, that has uh, eluded this place for a long time. And that one certainly will take a long time to get right, per se. Uh, but, but one, the messenger matters, and the message matters, absolutely does. So if you get that wrong, all of a sudden we start turning away you know, new Americans. We start turning away uh, opportunities to, to join the Republican Party. So, uh, but I'm, I'm confident, we're, we are certainly united. We're gonna, uh, you know, uh, I'm vocal. Maybe we'll all be vocal in the things that are important to us, but you'll see us come out united on the other side. We'll go here and then take it. Um, yeah, uh, to ask specifically about um, District 29, I was wondering if you are coming from the other previous representatives from, uh, from the border specifically, um, if you were consulted about that before it was introduced, uh, what have discussions with Congressman Gore looked like since then, and what's your general status with that bill? Yeah, look, I don't think there's a member in Congress that hasn't introduced a border bill in some form or fashion, right? So there's a lot of ideas. A lot of ideas that are thrown around, a lot of ideas that have come together. Uh, we, we haven't seen a final package yet, what that looks like, but I'm very confident that, uh, that uh, uh, Leader Scalise will put together something and, and get it over the finish line. We've been in talks with, uh, with leadership, we've been in talks, I've been in talks with, with, with other, other members to, to solidify that, and we will continue to have those talks. Uh, the number one thing in this place is no surprises. So you will see, you know, you will see it get built out how, how fast that goes, how slow that goes, it, that's yet to be determined. I mean, one thing that is clear is that piece of legislation in particular is going back into committee. And many of us fought for regular order. You, you saw the speeches on the floor where you know leadership had too much power, that the power had to go back into the rank and file, and you're seeing that in action. And I think it's very exciting, right? Let it go to the, the committees, let the committees shake it out, and, and, and let's have a broader conversation just, just dropping things on the House floor and getting an up and down vote, that's something that Nancy Pelosi did. That those days are gone. Uh, this is a new era in the House, and this is an era where rank and file have a voice uh, to, to, to deliver those. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My, my, my Spanish is wonderful. Uh, it gets even better after I've had a few tequila shots. Uh, I, I want to say I want to say one thing, and then I'll then I'll then I'll, then I'll turn. Yeah, I, no, 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 no. I, I want to say one thing. Is look, when when I look through the lens of America, I don't see black, I don't see white, I don't see brown. I see red, white, and blue. I spent 20 years in the military, and so while we have all these different diverse backgrounds, we're all Americans in there. So yeah, yeah. And Maria and, and Maria. La, la, este grupo está unido en que vamos a trabajar en los temas que son importantes para esta nación, para los latinos, pero para toda esta nación. Y estamos unidos. Y, y vivimos en una época distinta. Ya la señora Nancy Pelosi no es presidenta de la Cámara. Los días de que ella podía eh, imaginarse algo y eso iba directamente al pleno.
sin poder votar, sin poder cambiar, sin poder hacer enmiendas, eso se desapareció cuando los, los republicanos eh, obtuvimos la mayoría. Así que aquí vamos a trabajar muy de cerca con este grupo y con otros individuos para la agenda, para asegurar que los Estados Unidos continúen siendo el mejor país del mundo, que la inflación se rebaje, que la frontera está asegurada, que nuestros hijos tengan la mejor educación. Esa es la agenda de este grupo, de los republicanos, y estamos extremadamente unidos. Pero la democracia requiere conversación y negociación, y los días de la dictadura de Nancy Pelosi, eso se han acabado, gracias a Dios, en el Congreso de los Estados Unidos. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Bueno, déjame, ¿Otra, otra, en, en, ¿Otra en español? Otra en español. 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 Otra todo el mundo en este en esta conference republicana o en este grupo republicano quiere cerrar la frontera porque no le conviene a nuestra gente, a la minoría más importante de la nación. Nosotros queremos hacer ese negocio de cerrar la frontera de alguna manera, poner orden en la frontera, eso es lo que se llama border security. Y por eso estaba diciendo John que se considera border security, la seguridad en la frontera, e inmigración, dos cosas diferentes. Tú sabes muy bien que yo siempre he pensado que se puede hacer primero la frontera, cerrar la frontera, poner orden y después entonces ocuparnos de la inmigración. Porque el problema de la inmigración tiene tres problemas. La economía de este país necesita mano. La clase empresarial está desesperada por trabajadores. Y hay cientos de miles de gente que viven en la oscuridad. Por eso yo presenté la ley de dignidad. Pero primero, primero, primero hay que poner orden en la frontera y los demócratas nos tienen que ayudar a hacer eso. Si no son unos irresponsables, porque el Partido Republicano quiere poner orden, sellarlo, volver a traer a la gente de una manera legal. Pero si eso no pasa es porque los demócratas no nos están ayudando. Y bien yo lo conozco porque esas fueron mis... Mi, yo estuve en la televisión y conozco muy bien y por eso Tony es importantísimo porque re, re, él representa a los mexicanos al 65, 70% de la población hispana. Y por eso es importante que, nos, que todo el mundo sepa que el hispano quiere poner orden en la frontera. So, I've just said that in Spanish, then now you can, en, ya yo contesté esa pregunta. Sí, sí, ya, ya, vamos sí. a cerrar ya. Gracias. Última pregunta, sí. This is last. Sí, si sí, nos puede decir qué tan significante es que hoy el presidente Joe Biden reciba a Kevin McCarthy en la Casa Blanca. El, el presidente por semanas estuvo diciendo que no quiere negociar, no quiere negociar, no quiere, quiere negociar, que es altamente irresponsable. Eh, y ahora por la presión pública del pueblo de los Estados Unidos ha tenido que cambiar su punto de vista y ha comenzado por lo menos públicamente ahora a decir que está dispuesto a hablar y negociar. Eh, eso siempre es una, un buen paso, pero en la democracia se requiere negociación. Eh, y que el presidente haya, haya insistido en que rehúsa hablar con la Cámara de Representantes es altamente irresponsable y espero que esto sea un cambio real, no solamente eh, una cuestión estética y que esté dispuesto a negociar para el beneficio de este gran país. Muchísimas gracias, Tony. Uh, 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 one, one final thing, because you had a good point. Uh, she essentially mentioned uh, McCarthy, uh, Speaker McCarthy and, and, and President Biden meeting in the White House today. Uh, later today, I have a meeting with uh, Susan Rice. Uh, she's the top top uh, policy advisor for the, the White House. This is where organizations like the Hispanic Conference have a seat at the table. We're going to talk about border security. We're going to talk about other things. But this is where governing conservatives have a seat at the table, not only in the House, but outside, especially during a divided government. All right. Thank you. Everybody. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias.